Hey everyone, this is Brian from Solid Rock Church Youth Group in Los Angeles, California. And if you're like us, really a time where everybody needs to hear like message of hope, but you're unable to meet physically, but you're able to meet digitally through live stream, but that can get complicated. So in this video, we're gonna show you how to set up a live stream on your uh, congregation as we figured out ours. So we're gonna cover everything you need at a step-by-step -step to get your church uh, on the internet. So first thing you need is basically a computer with an internet speed of, well, 10 megabits per second on, uh, on the upload side. Because anything less than that, you're gonna start suffering in quality on 1080p, uh, HD, 30 frames per second, all that jazz. Just know that anything less than eight megabits per second, you're gonna start losing quality, you're gonna start losing resolution, which is fine, but if you're gonna, go for the full 1080p resolution, you need an upload speed of minimum 10 megabits per second. And right now I am using Windows uh, computer on this MacBook. Trust me when I say you want to stick with Windows PC on this one because Windows people have figured everything out on this end. Apple is just gonna be a headache after a headache of trying to figure things out. Even though this is a MacBook, I am running Windows. You will need a camera. We're gonna talk about cameras in a second. You will need what's called a hardware encoder. We are going to talk about which one you want. And of course, some cables and adapters. We're gonna talk about all of those. And we're also gonna to have to talk about your software and your platform account. We are going to be using YouTube, but in this particular video, we're gonna be talking about Facebook Live because apparently our YouTube account requires 24 hours from this point on to really go live. So we're gonna show you on Facebook Live, which is still a great platform, and all the concepts are the same. So let's talk about cameras. The camera we are gonna be using in this video is an a7S II from Sony, but any camera will do as long as it has three things. First, it needs an HDMI out. Just about every hardware encoder that you're gonna purchase today is gonna have an HDMI. Second thing you wanna look for is a microphone in. Technically, that's not required. It's more of a highly recommended item as a backup because you will have audio uh, syncing issues later unless you have a microphone in. Uh, that's just generally the easiest way to take care of it. We're gonna talk about audio briefly later. Uh, third thing you want is an AC adapter, some kind of a power that plugs into the wall. In this case, this camera, you have to buy a separate AC adapter that plugs into the battery and straight into the wall. Make sure you do that because if your sermons are as long as mine, these batteries will not last long enough to capture all of it. And if you want to capture the worship team, for example, it will be even longer. And these batteries simply don't last that long. You need the AC power. So quick word on the tripod though. Okay, whether you get this $24 uh, Amazon basic tripod here or this $1,000 professional tripod, unless you're doing a crazy camera motion, they both will look exactly the same. If you're just gonna go online and then preach from the pulpit and have one angle, these cheaper stuff will do. So keep that in mind. So the encoder that we're gonna be using in this video is the Elgato or Elgato, I don't know how to pronounce it, is HD60S. So the job of this is to take video signal and turn it into something you can use on the computer. Uh, for example, in this case, we're gonna stream it online. I recommend the HD60S, but just about any hardware uh, encoder will do as long as it's compatible with your system. Just know a lot of these things can get finicky. It's really simple. There is an HDMI in port. There is a USB-C that comes with an USB-C to USB adapter. It, this particular one has an audio in as well, which is important because sometimes a camera mic in will have a lot of noise. So this guy, we tested it out, it sounds pretty good, and it has an HDMI out. So let's try and set these guys up. First, you set, go ahead and set up your camera. Quick word on lenses, if you guys have an interchangeable lens. Obviously, if you wanna zoom into the pastor, you wanna telephoto the lens, I recommend maybe uh, anywhere between 70 to 110. Um, right now, we're gonna be using 55 or in this case, this guy's a 28. We want to be able to capture the worship team and we wanna get close up so that we can capture the sermon. So we're gonna use 28. Just know that anywhere between like a 35, 55, 90, those kind of focal length and a millimeter on the lenses will all work. This particular camera comes with a micro HDMI to HDMI. And I'm guessing most of your uh, cameras will come with a micro HDMI slot rather than a full HDMI or even a mini. So let's plug this in right here. And on the other end, we have an HDMI cable here. So we're gonna plug that in. We're gonna plug it into the Elgato in, HDMI in here. This particular Elgato comes with uh, USB-C to USB-C 
cable. And here is a dongle, because in a MacBook, you have to have a dongle. So we're gonna put that, plug that into the USB port, and we are going to plug that dongle in to the USB-C. It's weird, because we just went from a USB-C to USB to a USB-C. But for some reason, this works, but when we plug directly into a USB-C, it does not. All right, now that we have everything hooked up, it's important for you to download the necessary software. Now, Elgato has a game capture software. It's called Game Capture, and they do have here a Windows version as well as a Mac version down here. But what's important to note is that the Windows version works far better than the Mac version. Right now, we're using only Game Capture to test the software because it's the software that it came with. Okay, here's the software. Right now, it says no signal, but it finds the correct model number, so that's good. Right now, it says no signal because we didn't turn on the camera yet. All right, so we're gonna power this on. Make sure it powers on. And then there we go. It's the footage from our camera. Now, notice that the game audio is going to most likely be the microphone on your camera. So we're going to be talking about the software side of this later on in this video. Just know that we are just using this to test it. If you are going to go straight from the camera, use a camera microphone and all that, you can stream straight from this software, uh, no problem. But because we have a worship team, we got Mixer, we got audio issues, we're going to be using a different software. Um, audio is a whole different beast. In fact, let's talk about it now. So the audio will most likely be the trickiest part about all this because it depends. If you're gonna go straight from the microphone into the camera, or if you're gonna use some fancy wireless technology, or if you're gonna use a microphone that's built into the camera, all those things are the easiest solution actually. But for most part, I'm guessing you're gonna use something like this, a mixer. If you have a mixer with any kind of processing, or in this case, this is a digital mixer, any digital mixer, unfortunately will cause what's called will cause what's called latency. It's basically the audio will come slower than the video. So your lips will not match. When someone's talking, the audio will always come out a little later. So in this case, we are gonna be using this Behringer XR. We're gonna be using the auxiliary send from here, and we're gonna put it into Elgato or the camera, and we're gonna see how much latency there is, and there's software that'll correct it. So we're gonna talk about that later. So let's set this guy up. All right, so we're gonna be using AUX3, so let's put this XLR cable into AUX3. It's gonna be stereo, so AUX4. Elgato uses a 3.5 millimeter uh, input, so we're gonna be using a couple of adapters because these are the ones we have here at church. So we're gonna go from XLR into... Okay. These quarter inch adapters, that goes into a 3.5 millimeter. Just to let you know, your church setup might be different. Your uh, mixer will most likely have a quarter inch straight into quarter inch. Mine just happens to have XLR. However you achieve it, just know that this is the angle from your audio source to your source. This is 3.5 millimeter, just a typical headphone jack. That will go into the Elgato. Keep in mind that uh, this microphone in, like mentioned earlier, we can technically put, plug that straight into the microphone in. Just know that since there's a microphone in, you need to have a low level coming out of from there and low level recording setting inside the camera. The thing to remember about this, for some odd reason, especially this particular camera, adds a lot of noise when it comes from the Behringer straight, straight to here. The advantage though, uh, is that the latency is greatly, greatly reduced. But again, if you're using a digital mixer, this will always have latency. A, a quick word about noise is a little bit of noise is not bad. In fact, if there's no noise, it sounds like the TV broke. A little bit of the room noise is actually a good thing. It's just really distracting when it's really, really high up. So you just want to keep that under control, but don't panic because you hear a little bit of noise. There are, there are numerous uh, free software. There's one called OBS Studio, which is an open source and free. But the one we're going to be using is Streamlabs OBS. It's also free, but there are premium versions of that. Remember earlier, we verified that everything worked through Game Capture HD. The first thing you're gonna realize is, well, there are a couple of logins. We're gonna be using Facebook, eventually YouTube. It'll ask which page you want to stream to. Go ahead and select your church. Read through the options and see if any of these are appealing to you. Click done, click okay. And we're gonna start fresh. We want to set up, oh, hello. We want to set up the Elgato Game Capture HD60S. And of course, we still want to use the line from Elgato because that's the way we set it up. Next. 
we don't want to be using any theme, at least for our purpose. There we go. All right, so this is your studio screen. Under sources, we're gonna add video capture device, which is gonna be the Elgato. Add source. Let's go ahead and name that Elgato HD60S. Add source. Make sure you click on it. <laughs> click done. There you go. There is the Elgato 60S. That should be the Elgato N. All right. Just to let you know that uh, we just had an issue earlier with uh, Elgato in between shots. Um, for some reason, it was recording the microphones. In this case, all the settings were correct. We just had to reset the, reset the software and suddenly it started working. These are very glitchy and buggy softwares in general. So make sure you guys try restarting and rebooting uh, occasionally to make sure all the settings come back correctly. So that is coming from the mixer microphone. So once you set everything up, let's go ahead and click live. Go live. We don't want to share it to Facebook unless you want to. All right, we're going to say test. We're going to say, ah, uh, what the heck was that? I'm gonna say another test. Now, if you use that method, apparently Streamlabs requires you to set a gaming category. And if you don't feel like setting up a gaming category, you're gonna have to go through a custom stream key. Now, in order to do that, go ahead and log in to your f actual Facebook account that you have an admin uh, role. Here's our church. If you go to publishing tools, you want to go to the creator studio. It might be in, it might not necessarily be here. Yours might be down here. Just look for the creator studio and you're going to create a post. Make sure your church page is selected. When you create posts, you're going to click go live. Don't worry, you're not actually going live yet. Once you get to your go live screen, go ahead and put in your titles. This is where you can actually put like Sunday worship, and then start talk maybe a couple of notes about the video, your sermon topics or verses of the week, that sort of thing. What's really important here is this thing called a stream key. You want to click copy. You want to click the stream key. Here is the Elgato, making sure the audio still works. Here is a screen. Go to the setting, which is a gear head on the lower left. Go to, go to stream and you are going to get this stream to custom ingest. So we're going to go to, nope. We're gonna go through streaming services. Now, if you have your own church uh, streaming server, this is where you will put your information in. Whoops, going back to stream. We're gonna select Facebook Live, server by default, and this is where you put in your stream key. Go ahead and copy paste, uh, paste it, V. <laughs> Yep, there's that. Okay, so we should be ready to go. Let's see if that works. We're gonna click go live and you should be able to see this video stream through here. Now keep in mind, if you're actually using the church uh, page, this is live. So when you click this live, uh, for now, it's okay. This is not gonna go online just yet, but if you click go live here, you should be able to see connecting live video. Facebook should be able to see on their website what you're sending. There it is. So Facebook is receiving your feed. This is a good thing. Keep in mind though, this is like five to 10 second delay. <laughs> so don't freak out like I did earlier when you jump in front of the camera and suddenly you don't see yourself. In order to go live, you have to go to the, this left side here and click go live. Once you click here, now my entire congregation will see this empty space and wonder what's going on. So. We're just testing here. Excellent. We're live now. The problem is if there's someone talking right there right now, the lips and, uh, and the video, like audio and video is not gonna match. So their lips and what they're saying, the uh, audio of it is not going to match. So we're gonna go ahead and fix that. Right now we just wanted to make sure we went through full circle. Keep in mind, this is really broadcasting live right now. And when you click end video and then click okay, your video will be saved on your church page. So make sure you delete that, okay? Or set it up in the beginning where it doesn't save. 
also keep in mind that stream key has to be new each time you live stream. There's a unique stream key to each live stream. So audio syncing issue is gonna go through some trial and error. Um, you're gonna have to see, someone is just gonna have to see like what it looks like on the other end. Um, the best way to do it, for us to do it, is to actually stream it live just like what we did, but make sure someone's out there talking in the microphone and things, and make sure someone else is on the other side actually on the phone or something where they could see the actual live feed and let you know, hey, the lips don't match. It's too fast, too slow, that type of deal. But this is where you actually kind of change those type of settings. If your video is coming in faster than your audio, then what you want to do is click the source, add a filter, and then press the plus to add it. And we're going to go to what's called render delay. And what this will do is add or slow the video down by milliseconds. So if we put 5,000, that means five seconds. Uh, on my particular software and for this uh, setting, it says you cannot do more than 500, so that's fine. Uh, you shouldn't be able to need more than that, but depending on your computer, it might be different because uh, the desktop PC that we did it on, we were able to do up to seven seconds, so we'll see how that works. So you can put 300, click done, and now the video will come 300 seconds, milliseconds later than what it was intended. If it's the other way around, then what you wanna do is click this gearbox on the mixer and you will see what's called sync offset. Now for the Elgato HC60S, you want to add, let's say 5,000. I think it's gonna say the same thing again. Oh, it didn't. Well, what do you know? For audio, you can actually offset it. So you want to slow down the audio by a milliseconds, then this is the window to do it. So render delay is to delay the video. The gearbox on the mixer is to delay the audio. So using that, you will be able to get pretty close. Uh, you should be able to get pretty close on your broadcast. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Now you can stream live your congregation. Uh, make sure you guys reorganize the cable, use a gaff taper, the like, and then just tape down the cable because when you have, if you have any members or even tech, uh, that walk around, you know, it re it's safety issue. It reduces the chance of just tripping over. We hope you found this video helpful. There are obviously other ways to do this. There are simpler ways to do this in terms of you just use a webcam on a MacBook. Uh, maybe we'll make a video about that if uh, you guys will want that. Um, if you guys think it'll help be helpful for uh, furthering the kingdom, we would obviously love to do that. And of course, there are fancier ways of doing this, including multiple cameras or and using things like Sling, uh, where you can use your eye patch to do this. And if you have the budget for that, that's great. And maybe we'll even talk about that uh, using video switchers and things. Whatever the case, we want to hear from you guys. Was this video helpful? Was there a part that's lacking? Uh, is there something we can put in the description to help the churches uh, give a message of hope? Because these days more than ever, we need to spread the gospel because it's a message of hope and is certainly something people need these days. So we certainly hope that uh, live streaming from your congregation will help spread the word. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the comments.